In 2023, the Women's World Cup will be heading down south to Australia and New Zealand, the first two countries to allow women to vote. A welcome change from Qatar, where people are only allowed to vote on which new Pringles flavour should be released. Anyway, here are the Women's World Cup 2023 stadiums. Just a heads up, I'll be using the non-commercial names for the stadiums, which is what they'll go by throughout the tournament. Stadium Australia was first built for the 2000 Olympics, but has since become a prominent stadium in Australian football. What makes this stadium special is that it can accommodate sports such as AFL and cricket, with their oval fields, then can become almost rectangular when it's time for football or rugby, due to its movable seating. It also has some of the widest video boards that you're likely to see. This is the largest stadium that will be used, so it's no surprise that it will be hosting the final. Sydney Football Stadium opened just this year. If you recognise the name though, that's because it was built on the site of the old football stadium in Sydney that also went by the name Sydney Football Stadium. It wasn't a hugely popular decision to demolish the old stadium because it wasn't that old, but this combination of the bronze facade and the extraordinary indigenous inspired pattern on the seating is making me think it was worth it. This stadium is absolutely stunning. It could even be the best football stadium in Australia, but personally I slightly prefer another one that you'll see later on. Lang Park is the northernmost venue that will be used at the tournament, and the subtropical climate is reflected in the architecture a little bit with the floating roof allowing for plenty of airflow, and the several verandas throughout the stadium where you can enjoy a cold one. I don't know if that's specifically subtropical, but it's certainly very Australian. One little quirk about this place is that there's actually a church on the premises, that they had to leave untouched during the rebuild of the stadium in the early 2000s, and that's actually slightly changed the shape of the stadium. The separation of church and stadium is of the utmost importance, Melbourne Rectangular Stadium. First of all, I just love the cloud-like outer shell of this stadium. Made up of several interlocking geodesic domes, which themselves are made from a bio-frame, consisting of hundreds of metal and glass triangles. Jeez, it's hard to keep up with this architectural lingo. It can also light up all the colours of the alphabet at night. So there's a lot to see before you even step foot inside the stadium. But when you do, it doesn't disappoint. The interior is almost as spectacular, with that unconventional roof looking great from the inside as well. I'd like to see more stadiums like this, where they clearly were not afraid to think outside the box. Perth Rectangular Stadium is officially known as Perth Oval. But for some reason, they've decided the Perth Rectangular Stadium was more appropriate. I can't for the life of me figure out why. I really like this ground because not only does it look pretty good, but due to its interesting history, the stadium has a bit of character. There's a nice mix of old and new stands, and there's even a small terrace stand to the north known as the Shed, which is something that is very common in the lower tiers of English football, but not so much in Australia. Hindmarsh Stadium has a similar story to the last one. It started out as an oval way back in its early days, then was developed into a rectangular stadium. Just recently they started on a new redevelopment, which will be complete prior to the tournament. It will still be pretty much the same simple stadium, they just needed to make a few changes to be able to host the event, including a slight capacity increase and they've also added an extra roof. It mightn't be an extraordinary stadium, but sometimes, sometimes ordinary, uh, it, oh. And now we'll head across the Dutch to New Zealand. Eden Park. The name Eden Park sounds like some sort of idyllic holiday destination, but for visiting rugby teams that face the All Blacks here, it's anything but that. It has on the rare occasion hosted New Zealand soccer team however, and they are slightly less formidable. It's also the city's premier cricket venue despite its tiny dimensions. Eden Park is the oldest stadium you'll see in this video, having opened in 1900, 
and it does have some old school features like the facade of the northern stand. However, it was updated about a decade ago for the Rugby World Cup, so there are some modernised sections as well. Interesting venue. Wellington Regional Stadium, or the Cake Tin as it's also known. Scholars are still debating what the name Cake Tin is derived from. The most widely accepted theory is because it looks like a cake tin. I'd agree. With that sleek metallic exterior and the single tier of yellow seats, it even looks like it's been greased with butter. It's a fine stadium, but it is the only one that will be used at the tournament that is in a permanent oval configuration. I think a lot of Wellingtonians would have preferred a rectangular stadium, given that this place hosts like one or two cricket matches per year. Are they called Wellingtonians? Forsyth Bar Stadium. Dunedin is known for its perpetually cold climate, so to counteract that, they now play all their football and rugby inside of what appears to be a rather extravagant greenhouse. But if you are going to have a fully enclosed stadium, it is ideal to have a transparent roof that lets in plenty of light. Not only does it look bright and airy, but due to all that sunlight, they're able to maintain a natural grass field. Well, it's not quite 100% natural, but a McNugget still counts as real chicken, so this is real grass. For a small city, this is a fantastic stadium. Waikato Stadium We've saved the best till last is not a saying that applies in this case. But this fairly basic stadium does include one feature that no other stadium in this video does, and is a feature that I appreciate. That is what is known as the green zone. No, that's not a section of the ground where you're allowed to light up a doobie, it is simply a grass terrace to the south of the ground. Now that mightn't seem like anything special, but for whatever reason, I just love a grass berm, or in this case the much more technologically advanced grass terrace. I believe they had to bring in specialist engineers from Korea to build it. So, there you have it. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, have a good one.